stop people from even entering into the game reserves. And by doing that, we need to detect them as they're becoming a threat, which means as, as they're approaching the boundaries of the reserves. And we've identified radar technology and thermal imagery cameras, underground sensors and fence sensors that will enable us to do that. We have a radar system uh, with some electro-optical or basically like a camera system and as well as an infrared system so you can see things at night in low light or in uh, bad weather conditions. And today we're deploying uh, these kind of radars with the, for the U.S. government. We're, we're uh, uh, providing them to them so they can use them for the U.S. But, uh, Customs and uh, Border Initiative. The solution that we're offering is that uh, we're not going to have any more dead rhinos. And that's the key. If we can turn around and stop people from even getting into the reserves, we're going to stop them from, from shooting animals. And at the end of the day, uh, a reactive approach means that we've got dead animals. A proactive approach means that uh, we keep the animals alive. Well, what really interests me is, is finding a meaningful solution to this to the rhino problem. Um, you know, there's been a, an awful amount of, of talk and very very little action. I think we're getting somewhere in that in that we are starting to think about how we can use technology and uh, and possibly uh, more military techniques to to protect our rhino. The application of this type of system is fairly broad. So everybody's got on their mind at the moment the rhino poaching and the, the issues that we're having around the rhino. But at the same time, we're losing wild dogs to bushmeat traders, uh, cheetahs to bushmeat traders, abalone, huge problems just here off the coast in Cape Town. Uh, we've been chatting to the guys in that department as well, looking how can we protect the seas using radar technology as well. Um, so I think at the end of the day, the we, we're offering a much broader thing than just saving the rhinos. We're actually just protecting areas and stopping threats from coming in. You know, we, we, we're exploring a lot of technology. What we've done is, we've done this in the past, we, we've done this, and if we find something that works, if we motivate properly and it works, and it can contribute uh, um, to the conservation of a resource and the sustainable utilization of our marine resources, which is worth uh, millions and uh, billions, and uh, uh, then then uh, we will definitely consider that, yes. Yeah, the problem with, with us being uh, a private game reserve is, is obviously our resources are limited, and, and there is going to be a, a, a big financial uh, price tag to this, but um, if we can, uh, if we can generate a lot of international, well, regional and international interest, and I think uh, together we can put put something that that works. Yeah, the costs are, are fairly high, um, but if you look at the effectiveness of what we're offering, um, at the moment, possibly 40, 50 percent effective, but you've still got the poaching increasing, and we're hoping to push that effectiveness up to 80, 100 percent effective, um, which in the long run will reduce your costs. Uh, so. For sure you might need to pay out now, but at the end of the day um, it is cost effective. I believe that, that this, is, this is about as close so far as we're going to get to a meaningful protection system for our rhino and for the rest of our game. I mean, uh, we're talking about uh, wild dog and uh, um, elephant. Um, who knows what, what's next on the, on the menu list for the, for the poaching world. The key is that we're obviously losing rhinos and animals at a fairly fast rate, so this needs to be brought in and implemented as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So decisions need to be made fairly smartly about um, timeframes around uh, ensuring the funding is available to be able to do this as well.